Hello folks, you are welcome to another live stream here. Sorry, I'm just putting my charger in so I don't lose power. Um, yeah, we're all sorted there now. So welcome to another live stream where I'm going to be sharing with you lots of driving test tips, advice, news, updates on um, masks, NCT, all that kind of stuff. I'd like you to share your comments with me so that others can benefit from any tips or advice or anything you've experienced in your driving test. And if you have any questions, you can get them into me as well, okay? So I'm here for the next hour, hour and a half to answer your questions, uh, share some tips and advice so that you can be able to achieve your driving goals, okay? So just briefly, first of all, I will be going through this driving test report sheet. I'll be going in detail through every mark on it. I'll be explaining to you what the tester said to this fella and what he remembers as well. And the tester gave him some very specific feedback, which I think you'll find very useful and beneficial. As you can see at the top there, anything to do with your driving test, whether it's managing it, um, changing a date, checking the status, looking for your invitation to apply for the test, you have to do it on the myroadsafety.ie online portal, okay? They're, they're not going to take calls over the phone or anything like that, unless it's an emergency, unless it's something specifically that can't be handled online. But... They're going to want you to handle everything to do with your driving test application online on the My Road Safety um, online portal. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Subscribing costs nothing and it does me a small favour with the YouTube algorithm. Um, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy the content and what I put out there. The sign you see on screen is no entry to vehicles. I will be very confident that you would be asked about this sign on your test. There, it's not that they're going to ask it all the time, but they it is very likely they like asking questions, that, sorry, road signs that are not immediately obvious. So whatever you do, make sure you know this road sign, okay? No entry to vehicles. Just remember to put in vehicles at the end because pedestrians and cyclists might be able to go on the street, but uh, vehicles, not so much, okay? We have a couple of comments in there already. Oh, Wojciech, double V H or Wojciech. Yeah, yeah, Tam. Um, thank you for tuning in, Wojciech. Good to have you there. And you're welcoming me back, Jen Kuya Barzo. And Jan Kowalski there, I think. Um, I don't see a comment, but I'm sure it'll come up in a minute there. So welcome along. Get your comments in there, folks. Um, please share any information. Others can help as well if you share your experience, thoughts, and knowledge, okay? Um, moving on then, my email is just down there on the screen, just, just at the bottom right there, danetai at gmail.com. If you have any questions, if you'd like me to analyze your report sheet, send me a screenshot or send me a, some decent quality PDF or whatever, like I, like you can see on screen there, I will go through the report sheet. But if you're going to send me your report sheet, remember, try and give me as much information as possible. Don't just say, this is how I failed. Can you help me out? It's going to help me and others if you can explain to me what happened, why it happened, and anything that the tester might have said to you that could help you improve for the next time, okay? And I may use that in a live stream, um, if possible, depending on the feedback that I get, okay? I've recently joined TikTok. Um, when I say recently, about three months ago there, I did a collaboration with a girl called Lauren Whelan, who I gather is a fairly big name in TikTok circles. I didn't know her before, it, but I had a great day with her, um, to giving her some tips. She she has a she has a great channel, um, if you're into like makeup and um, fashion, and she travels a lot and all that. So Lauren Whelan, you can check her out on TikTok and Instagram. I had a great day with her. She's a great driver, and hopefully she'll pass her test soon. And that's what got me into TikTok anyway. So I'm doing a different style of videos there. Day in Thai one is the TikTok handle. If you want to go over there and check out my videos, that'd be great. They're a little bit more, um, they're a little bit less formal, let's say, than my YouTube. I always keep the YouTube videos nice and formal and straight, but the TikTok is where I can go a little bit mad, okay? So check it out if you want. And folks, before I forget, I, I really, TikTok is such a brilliant place. There's a there's a fella on that called Tyg Devery, I think his name, Tyg Devery. He does impersonations of what it's like to grow up in the country, and he did a great one there a couple of weeks ago on learning to drive in the country, where his dad's teaching him how to drive um, a tractor and it's kind of a humor that if you grew up in the country like I did you'll really be able to relate to it okay so Tyg Devery uh, check him out on TikTok okay let's get to a few comments there then folks um, so we have Wojciech Jan Kowalski doing his test on second time in February well Jan as we say in Polish 
Povodzenia, okay? Povodzenia. Good luck to you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Email or comment here. I'll be here for the next 90 minutes or so. A couple more comments there, folks, before I get into this report sheet. Um, Mer Merkai Mullah Zia. Thank you very much, Dan. Well, that's very kind of you. I'm not sure what I did, but I'm, I presume you're thanking me for the videos. You're very welcome. I just get a great kick out of making videos that are completely free of charge. And then if you want to support me by PayPal, Revolut, or by bank transfer, you can do that if you wish. But I just like putting the free stuff out there, and then you can use it to achieve your driving goals. That's what makes me happy, and I'm glad you enjoy the videos, Merka, if I'm saying that correctly. Okay, a couple more comments there then. Um, let me see. Uh, where, where am I? Sorry. Ar Arun Kumar. Good initiative. Indeed. The live stream, is it? Arkun or the 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 whatever is anyway. Thank you. Um, I try to do my best. You're saying thank you, and you're very welcome. Any questions, just let me know. Uh, Jan Dancer says Janky, Prussia Barzo, and Keen O T there. Before I get back to this, six of my grade, six of my eight grade two marks were on vehicle controls. Yeah, I, you know, I was gonna do a report sheet on the how well, it was full of vehicle controls, but I went ended up doing this because because of progress so you're reminding me of something there Keen. but anyway my instructor re instructor recently got a new car yeah couldn't believe the tester was so harsh yeah you see the tester is just going to judge you in the moment he's unfortunately he's not going to care about you needing time to get used to the car i got a new car there about a year ago and i was conscious of my learners just getting used to that as well but um yeah look what i know i know what you mean um there's not much you can do maybe Maybe you get an extra lesson, an extra lesson or two to help you get used to the car, maybe. Um, but it's done now, like, so you can't, like, it's it's over now, so. Uh, six of the eight grade two. I wonder, did, did you pass or not there, Keen? If you let me know, I'd be interested. Eight grade twos, you, you probably, you probably didn't pass if it's, um, if, if you got that many grade grade twos, although nine or more is a fail. But if they were, if they were all under one area, then they were, um, they were that would cause, because six or more under one area. Um, unless I was emailing you about that, I was emailing the fellow about this a while ago. But anyway, the the main point there, folks, is uh, the tester's not going to be he's not going to care about you getting used to the car. You have to be used to the car. You have to be comfortable with the car. I'd always advise if you're getting lessons for your driving test, try and get the lessons closer to the test date. Okay, when you're doing your EDT, like learning to drive from the start, it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine to spread out the lessons maybe every week, every two weeks. That's fine. But when you're doing a driving test, you're generally considered to be at a bit of a higher level so i think it's good to still spread them out to a certain extent but try and do the majority of the lessons in the say the week or so or the days before the driving test date and definitely one on the driving test date i mean if you get a lesson the day before and then the hour before your driving test i think that's really going to set you up nicely especially if especially if you're using the driving school car and it can really help you get used to that car and become more comfortable with it and then that's going to reflect well on you. It's going to give you more confidence. And then the tester will hopefully have more confidence in you. So try and get the lessons close to the test date. Have them in a little cluster there. I think it'll do you good. Keeps the information fresh in your head. Okay. So that was Keane's um, comment there. Um, uh, yeah, he just confirmed. Sorry, down six under one. Uh, maybe I was emailing you because it sounds very familiar to an email. I was with a chap there a few days ago. So six on the six grade twos on the one area will be a fail. Just like on this sheet here, this fella got nine grade twos on progress. That was always going to be a fail there for this fella as well. Okay, um, okay then. So Keen is the last one. I'll get who who she had. Sipwe and Sean and Murray. I'll get down to you in a minute. There. Now, folks. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Revolut PayPal. If you want to make a voluntary donation, you can do so by Revolut or PayPal. Uh, no obligation. Only if you feel it's worthwhile. Thank you in advance if you are. Like, right, okay, let's get down to this report sheet, okay? So this fella failed here, mainly um, on progress, okay? He was a bit slow, a bit hesitant to say the least, but he also lost a couple of marks there on observation as well, hazards, yielding as well there, and the reverse was a bit of an ordeal, which I'll explain now, and I really don't want you folks to be making the same mistake that this fella made on the reverse, okay? So I'm going to explain to you, first of all, what the tester said to him, then I'm going to explain what he remembers and what he what he acknowledges about the test, and then we'll go down through the down through the marks. Okay, so just bear with me. 
So the tester said that this candidate was far too slow. He was yielding far too much to cars and to other road users. Um, so he was being way too hesitant. He wasn't showing enough confidence. The tester was remarkably specific when it came to the reverse around the corner. He said that it took him six minutes to reverse around the corner. Now that is, that's way too long, folks. I mean, unless you're doing your reverse around the corner somewhere around Blanchardstown Shopping Centre on a Saturday afternoon, it shouldn't really take you longer than a minute or two to do your reverse around the corner. I know you might you might be get unlucky with a couple of cars and all that, but like when you're halfway around the reverse, you're sort of getting into the, the, the minor road, let's say. You start on the major road and you finish on the minor road. So there shouldn't be like it shouldn't you shouldn't be yielding to as many cars on the minor road and you don't have to yield to everybody that, that appears on the reverse, which I'll explain in a minute. But this 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 guy seemed to be appearing to or seemed to be yielding to everything that moves on the reverse, unfortunately. The tester said that the main reason he failed was on progress, that he was too slow, too hesitant at junctions, and generally speaking on the road. But he did say that he, overall he was a very good driver, he had good technique, uh, he was smooth and controlled, but he was just too slow. Um, that was the just what the tester said, okay? He didn't get go into huge detail, but I think the feedback that the tester gave him was probably enough, was probably appropriate enough, because he, it, it's clear from the sheet that the, where you see the five and the four and the other four, they were the main areas that, that uh, he fell down on. The learner then, so he acknowledges, this is from the learner driving now, he acknowledges that the reverse took a bit too long in hindsight, okay? He said it was a very busy road, and I, and I don't doubt it was a busy road, I'm sure it was like, but a busy road can be a busy road, but how you react to it is what matters, okay? And it seems that this learner was overreacting to traffic on the road. He said there was a lot of cars and there was a lot of people around, so he thought he was being safe by yielding. Unfortunately, he probably went too far in that regard. Um, he was waiting for people on the path, which is not necessary. No, I mean, not all the time. Like it, I just want to spe specify, it does depend on the situation, but this guy seemed to be waiting, seemed to be waiting on everyone that moved, whether it was a cyclist or a person walking beside the car or whatever. The learner also said that when the learner was taking a right turn, like at a, into a side road or something like that, um, he was flashed to go by another car. So he was taking a right and the other car was in front of him, say, going straight, but the learner was going right. So he was, the learner was yielding to cars coming straight. And while it's probably handier if the other car just goes ahead, like, the other car was flat was flashing him to go. Now the learner started hesitating. He wasn't sure about it, and eventually the tester had to say to him, "Look, just go, will you? You can you can proceed there. It's fine." Because he seemed to be waiting way too long. Now, when it comes to driving and doing the driving test, there is no special rule on whether you should go or whether you should not go if somebody flashes you. Okay, it is a complete grey area. There's nothing in the rules of the road book. There's nothing in the highway code about this. They just you just have to use your own good judgment and a little bit of common sense, okay? Now I can tell you for a fact that if somebody flashes you in the driving test, like you're wanting to turn right or wherever you're going, you, the learner driver doing the test, yes, you can go and you can proceed and take your turn, okay? But just make sure that it's safe to do so and that there's nobody coming behind the car that's giving you the right of way, okay? Or there's nobody coming in from the left or right that could obstruct you or that has right of way, okay? So if somebody flashes you, yes, you can go as long as you take all the necessary precautions and you don't risk uh, cutting somebody else off, okay? This guy just, just waited too long and, you know, the tester had to tell him. And look, if the tester intervenes in the test and tells you to do something or tells you you did something or whatever like that, that generally, and I don't mean all the time, but generally that's not a good look, okay? What else did the learner acknowledge then? Um, oh yeah, it was raining, okay? Now, look at This is Ireland, folks, in January. But it doesn't matter if it's June. It's just as likely to rain in this place, okay? So he was driving more cautiously because of the rain. He was a little bit hesitant because of the rain. And I, and I see this a lot in my emails. Um, people that are just taking it too extreme when it comes to the rain look if it's raining on your driving test i i i can completely understand that you want to be cautious okay but but here's the thing folks you can't bring it to the other extreme where you're going too slow so if you're driving in the rain you're not sure whether you should reach the speed limit or whatever like that my advice to you is 
judge each road on its individual merits okay so if you have a good wide road with a good surface okay good good surface and a, and a clear road in front of you well then yes you can certainly get up to or close to the speed limit as long as it's safe to do so okay but if the road is flooded it has more potholes and puddles well then certainly slow down okay but just because it's raining you can't just take it upon yourself just just to completely drive 20 kilometers or something below the speed limit just because there's a drop of rain okay that's not what you should do you should always judge each road or each situation individually okay you'll get a lot um you'll get a lot more brownie points and, you, and you'll you'll find the the driving test result will be a lot better if you do that it's a hard one to say because like it could be absolutely lashing rain and you could be well advised to go 15 or 20 kilometers below the speed limit on certain roads like it's such a broad general area i can't give you a one size fits all answer for it but what i would say is that judge each road individually okay and just remember as well finally on this even if it's raining okay even if it's lashing rain in the driving test you still have to be practical and you still have to show some flexibility okay just bear that in mind um the learner also said that he took a lot of lefts and rights in first gear when he probably could have taken them in second gear like um he's saying especially um especially t-junctions he's saying here now he might mean sideways i mean it, it, it's probably no harm to do most t-junctions in first gear because even if it's a handy left turn you may need to kind of go into first gear just 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 to slow down and give yourself a chance to look both ways it, like it will depend on the junction but um you don't have to do every turn in first gear like it, it'll always depend on the junction if it's a nice if you're going from a major road into a minor road and there's definitely no one no one coming like from from the front from 12 o'clock and safe and all good to go you should just go ahead in second gear like you don't you don't have to slow down and go to first gear in that situation now at a t-junction like say like a yield sign when you're coming up to a line or something you might be well advised to go to first gear but it will depend on the situation. I'm not I'm not going to give you a one size fits all answer because it will always depend on the junction, okay? Okay then. So we are going to go down through the report sheet here now. A lot of the stuff I've I've already covered, okay? But let's go down through it. And then I'll go back to some comments there. The comments are coming in there thick and fast, folks. So the first one there. Okay. The green mark, grade two, um, rules and checks. He didn't mention this. It's not a big deal. It's only a grade one mark. For those of you who don't know, grade one is minor. It doesn't impact on the overall score if you get, no matter how many grade ones you get. But if you get too many grade ones, it could develop into a grade two then. That's the only downside of that. But on its own, like individually, they're not a big deal. Uh, the blues are the grade two, so you can't get um, nine or more of them overall. And if you get if you get like four in a row, see the way you got four on hazards there. That, that I mean, that on its own was a fail. And you see the way he got nine under the heading progress, that's a fail. Because if you get six or more under the one heading, like progress, for example, that's a fail. So this poor chap failed on every possible metric. The nine overall, um, the six under one heading, progress, and the four in a row under hazards. So it was, even though the tester said he was a decent driver, it, there was just a, two or three specific areas that, that let him down. Anyway, back up to rules and checks. So rules and checks is, is about the, the rules of the road, basically, and the road signs. Now, he got two wrong, it appears here. He doesn't know which signs they are or which questions they are, but um, that's what it is there. If you get three or more questions wrong, that's going to be a grade two mark. But if you get two wrong, it'll just be two grade ones and one will be one grade one. Um, so it's nice to get off to a good start. You do not fail your test if you get a few questions and signs wrong. Okay, so don't, don't ever think that. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't get off to the best start, but at least he didn't get a grade two, okay? Next one, observation turning left, okay? So this is usually to do with the looks. Um, now, it, it, it could be to do with mirrors, but there's a separate category on the report sheet for mirrors, okay? So normally the tester will, will uh, mark you on mirrors turning left if you didn't check your mirrors on the left turn. But some testers might do it here. I'm, I, I don't know, because they're all, they're, they're all on to themselves, some of these fellas, so I, I don't know, but usually when it comes to observation it's about moving the head okay so if i saw this observation turning left i'd be thinking here that the person was taking the left turn but he didn't say let's like say for example he's coming out of a small road out out onto a major road like a stop sign i would be saying that if you got a mark there well maybe you rushed it a little bit and you didn't give yourself time 
to get the extra look, as in the, the last look or something like that. Because if you come up to um, a T-junction, you may have to stop, you may not, it depends on the line, and it depends how blind it is as well and how dangerous the junction is. But when you're taking a left, you have to give yourself a chance to do, at the very, very least, more than one look to the right. So if you're taking a left turn, okay, you can't come up like this to the left turn, okay? Just give a little look there, and off you go. That's, that's not how it works. If you're coming up to a left turn, okay, here's what you do, okay? So you on the way up to it, you check your mirrors, middle and left. I mean, you can check your right mirror if you want, but there's not really much point um, be because that's on the right side, but it, it's, it's no big deal. So mir mirrors, mirrors, indicate, okay? Coming down to the junction, slowing down gradually, okay? Now, even before you get to the junction, do, do, do this, okay? See that there? Preview the junction, okay? Maybe get the mirrors again, maybe get the mirrors again as you're coming down. So remember, MSM, mirrors, signal, mirrors, okay? As you're coming down to the line then, nice and slow, at this stage you need to judge if it's blind or open. So if, if it's blind, you can't really see very clearly, so you probably will have to stop and creep out. And then you, as you're stopping, then you're doing the see, looking both ways like that. Okay, you decide it's safe to go, so you're going to creep a little bit, do more looks, and then one last look like that. So you see all those looks I got there? See all that? I'm not going to give you a number now, but but like, you know, you, you, you can't, you, you cannot just give one look to the right and then just go left like you know coming out of a small jump coming out of a stop sign or something like that because that's not enough that that's not going to give you time to take everything into account so when it comes to a left turn or a right turn remember the observation starts from the moment the driving tester says next left please and i mean the mirrors an indicator check the mirrors again on the way down preview the junction okay maybe creep out if you want Sorry, not if you want. Um, I mean, creep out if you need to because it, it, if it's blind, not all junctions will not all junctions will be blind. Um, as you're at the stop line, lots of looks like this. Okay, not just one look, and then just as your front wheels cross the white line, one last look, and off you go. Similarly, when you're turning right, but this guy got it on left here, so. He made an it when when he I was exchanging some emails with him and he made an interesting point and I want you to be very conscious of this folks okay the 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 question he poses is, is is kind of an important one to remember. He said, maybe the tester didn't see me doing my mirror checks or looks, and then he asked me the legendary question: Do I need to check over my shoulder or blind spots when I'm at a stop sign or a yield sign, Dane? Now the answer to that is a big fat no. Okay, you do not check your blind spots or shoulder checks if you're at like traffic lights, at the, you know, first car at a roundabout or at a stop sign or a yield sign. Okay, when you're at a stop sign or a yield sign, you your main focus needs to be on the main road. Okay, like the traffic on the main road and any other road users like pedestrians and cyclists and all that kind of stuff. And you're also conscious of your position. Maybe you can come more this way, maybe, maybe more that way if you're turning right, whatever. So don't get into the habit of doing these unnecessary blind spot checks when they're not needed, okay? The only time you need to do a blind spot check is when you're moving off from a parked position, okay? And possibly when you're changing lanes, but even then it's only like that, it's only like a shoulder check when you're changing lanes, or uh, sorry, a, a sideway glance when you're changing lanes. So if you're changing lanes, the chin would never go beyond the shoulder, okay? You would just you use your eyes to kind of like put the eyes as much as you can to the right if you're watching to the right, okay? Um, so normally with this, it's just a misunderstanding about, um, about looks. And in my experience, a lot of people who originate from or have heritage from the Indian subcontinent, and that could be India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and any other place nearby. I often find in my emails is people from these parts of the world seem to think that if you go really, really, really slow, and if you do all these shoulder checks at junctions, that somehow that will impress the tester and it will articulate to the tester what a cautious and careful driver you are. In reality, in the real world where I live, it proves the opposite, okay? It tells the tester that you're not sure, that you don't trust other drivers, that you don't trust yourself, and that you're putting on this act and this show to sort of insult the intelligence of the tester in many ways because the tester, you know, you might be surprised to hear this, but the tester has two eyes and the tester is literally right beside you. Like he's he's actually right beside you, he or she. 
So they will be able to see you. I guarantee you, if you're looking properly, they'll know you're looking, okay? These guys, while there are a few unique ones out there, there are a few tulips, the majority of them are, the vast majority of them are perfectly fine and professional, okay? So just have faith in them, okay? Moving on, hazards. Now, I'm going to... The hazard is an interesting one because very often the tester will mark you on hazards for something that might not appear like a hazard, okay? Um, sometimes it's for, for speed bumps, for example, which I'm going to talk about. Now, he lost four marks here on hazards. He doesn't specifically say, let me just check my notes there. He doesn't specifically say what these marks were, but he, do, he did tell me that he was doing a lot of speed bumps in third gear, okay? Now, I, now again, I'm going to say my, my favorite phrase, this will always depend on the situation, depend on the ramp, okay? Normally, you would do speed bumps around about 20, 25 kilometers an hour, maybe a little below that, maybe a little above, it depends. But normally around 25 kilometers and usually second gear, okay? But there are some ramps that you might have to do them in first gear and other smaller ramps to so be grand just, just bursting on in third gear. It will always depend. So I'm just wondering, he didn't specify now, perhaps he was going over the ramps in the wrong gear and that's why he lost the mark on hazards because sometimes the testers will mark you there. Maybe he did the ramps too fast, although going by the going by the progress marks, I doubt it, but you never know. He could have went been going 35 or something or I don't know, 40 kilometers in third gear to ramps and it might not have been appropriate. But hazards is just something that's like it's it's under reaction, okay? So it's it's something that he didn't react to. So maybe he didn't react to the ramps properly, okay? Hazards can also be to do with um like roadworks, parked cars, potholes, anything that, that is a problem ahead of you, like like somebody opening a door or, or a cyclist swerving out in front of you, okay? Sometimes you will lose marks on hazards if you do too much mirrors and too much blind spots, okay? Because that's where that mark falls into place because you're sort of creating a hazard so the tester will mark you under that. Um, so maybe a pedestrian or cyclist crossing the road could be a hazard. Um, yielding unnecessarily. So remember I was telling you about when um, the other guy flashed him and he wouldn't go. That could also be, a, he could have also lost the mark there as well, okay? Um, and as I said, ramps in the wrong gear or going over them too fast too slow they're also potential hazards as well okay so i it could have been a bit of a mixture of all them it could have been to do a park cars he wasn't necessarily specific on that moving on to progress so progress is all about driving too slow okay if you lose a mark on progress it means that the tester thinks you were too slow or too hesitant okay so let's go, let's go through them here now um th let's do the small ones first the green marks okay on the straight and turning right now these are only grade one marks okay so no big deal but the tester is saying that for the straight on a straight road um which was a good probably a good open road of some type anyway the candidate was probably driving too slow or too far below the speed limit turning right the same uh two marks here and this reminds me actually do you remember i was saying to you at the start of this stream that um the grade one marks on their own don't um, impacting the result like like on their own but if you get more than two grade two marks in the one area or sorry if you get more than two grade one marks in the one area it can then evolve and develop into a grade two which is what could have happened here with the turning right so he maxed out with his two marks okay and then the tester probably said well look at you you're after getting two marks there now so i've no i've no more option to give you that so that's probably what probably what happened there so the tester is saying that on a right turn, which could have been from a major to a minor road or a minor to a major, he was too hesitant or too slow. And then if we get on to the, the more serious marks then on progress, progress turning right, the five marks. So this is where he was too slow, too hesitant. And I made a video recently on this, which I which I think is I think is one of my better ones. In that video on yielding, I kind of explained to you that when you're deciding whether or not to go, you have to think about the speed of the other car that's on the main road, like the car you're giving way to, or the van or whatever. You have to think of how fast they're going. Like when you're looking left and right, don't don't just look left and right for the sake of it. Like like look like take in how fast are these cars going? Are they picking up speed? Are they kind of staying the same speed that from what you can gather? But also make a note, are they going up a hill? do they have a ramp 
or a speed bump to navigate before they cross your path. These are all things that can help you. So like if you're going uphill, for example, you might have more of an opportunity to go. And if you're going downhill and they're picking up speed, well, then you probably have to wait. Like it, it will always depend. But when you're looking left and right, the whole reason that you're looking left and right is to watch out for these things like the hills, like any ramps that they might have. And, you know, is there a pedestrian about to cross the road? Not not near you, but just in front of them. And then that pedestrian crossing the road could act like a blocker and could give you the chance to pull out then. So on a right turn, I always like to link um, progress with um, position to a certain extent, turning right. And by position, I mean, if you're turning right and you're a little bit blind because, you know, you can't see because there's a hedge or there's, there's a fence or parked cars on either side, you will have to make sure that you creep out very, very gently. Maybe with the handbrake if you're on a hill, you don't want to roll back. Maybe not with the handbrake, it depends. So creeping out and getting into a good position is vital, absolutely vital to help you um, uh, go if it's safe or stay if it's not safe. Okay, So make sure you do that because it, it's only when you creep out that you have a better view. And if you have a better view, you can make a better judgment on whether the cars are coming or whether they're near enough or far enough away for you to go. Okay. So I understand as well on right turns that it can be difficult because you're crossing two lanes if you're going from a minor road to a major road. That that can be difficult. And that's why I always say to learners as well, do not stare the one way too long, okay? So just because there's a load of cars on the right, on, on, on this side here, on the right, like that doesn't mean you stare to the right the, for the next 10 seconds. Like, so like, what's going to happen? The, the cars are still going to be there in 10 seconds time. Like, yes, look, but also... Just, just give a few, give a look this way as well. Like if you're taking a right turn, it generally has to be 50-50, like, you know. If you're taking a left turn, you can give a few more checks to the right. But if you're taking a right turn, you have to kind of equalize the looks, okay. And that way, if a gap does appear then, like if there's not, if, if, there's a, if the gap does appear on the right, because you're giving lots of looks to the left as well, you, the learner driver, you're more up-to-date with your observations, more up-to-date with your looks, and that means you're in a better position to make the correct decision whether or not to go or whether to whether to stay or go like okay so sometimes i think that pr losing marks on progress turning right and turning left is linked to position getting into the right position like getting like creeping up you, to give yourself a better view and it's also linked as well to observation because if you're not if you're not given balanced looks on both sides and uh, it can cause indecisiveness it can cause you to not have the most up-to-date information in your head and it can cause delays going okay so the tester saying anyway that he was too slow here turning left turning right he acknowledges as well in his email that he was doing too many junctions in first gear when he should have just went ahead in second gear okay look i always say that i say it in the emails i say it in the comments i'm saying to you now you have to judge each junction each roundabout each side road each crossroad individually okay they're not all the same and they will all vary they'll all have different hills they'll have different markings different signs and different volumes of traffic okay so you have to judge them all based on what you can see at that given moment okay and, and as and just to finish like you will need to do some junctions in first gear but there are some some junctions you could do in second gear or even third gear like if it's safe to go and it's, there's no reason to stop and it's perfectly safe and open and it's not a stop sign or anything like that you you should be able to go in second gear particularly from a major road into a minor road and just on the third gear comment like you wouldn't really do that many junctions in third gear i'm i'm presuming but like if you have a a large roundabout like a, a large open roundabout maybe linked to a national road or something like that and it's very very it's kind of quiet it's safe there's, there's nobody really coming and, and, and it's a very very broad road broad roundabout you could certainly do that in third gear if it's safe okay it will depend on the volume of traffic. It will depend on how much you slow down by. But this is why I keep saying to you that you have to preview the junction, okay? Preview. That's the golden golden word when it comes to junctions, roundabouts, crossroads. Preview. And that means don't wait until you get to the line to start looking. Be looking left and right or, or scanning with the eyes anyway or, or a little bit of head movement. Not, not too much. Depends how close you are. But be looking way before you actually stop. That'll give you a good idea then of what it's like, how many cars are there, how many park cars, pedestrian crossings, all that kind of stuff, okay? 
Moving on then, vehicle controls, secondary controls. So secondary, so a primary control is like the steering wheel or the gears or the pedals, whereas a secondary control is kind of like the wipers or the lights or something like that. So he didn't tell me what was this was about now. No, I don't have anything about the second, but it could be something to do with the wipers. Like, um, He did say it was raining actually, didn't he? So maybe he left the wipers on too long when the rain was a bit lighter, okay? Cause, and that's an important point, folks. If, if it's raining on your test, and it could be raining or, or, or showery or something like that, okay, you don't, don't, um, don't leave the wipers on, like, full speed when the rain has slowed down or when, the, or when the, rain, the rain has got lighter, okay? If you can see that the rain has got lighter, well, then slow down the wipers, okay? Because it's environmentally better. You're saving your blades. Um, you're causing them less wear. So just, you know, have your wipers working in a way that reflects the conditions, okay? And of course, once the rain stops, then turn them off, okay? So, pardon me, it could be something to do with that. He wasn't specific. Either way, it was only a grade one mark, so it wasn't really a big deal. Okay, um, let me see what have we got here. Yield right of way, turning. Now, this is one I'm not sure about. It, it could be connected to the the point when he was um, <clears throat> he was flashed by another fella and he wouldn't go and the tester had to tell him to go. It could be to do with that. He wasn't specific. I don't. I don't recall any feedback on that specifically. But normally, if you see a mark on um, yield right of way turning right, as as you can see there, for example, it's normally because the tester is saying that you proceeded when you should have let somebody else go. So he's saying that the other person had the right of way here. Okay. So if ever you lose a mark on yield right of way, the tester is saying basically, you know, you should have let him go or you should have let her go because they had priority. It was a bit, you know, you didn't have priority yourself. Um, so it could be connected with the guy that was flashing him. I'm not 100% sure, um, but that's what that's. So anyway, it's just a one mark. It's not a terribly big deal. The, like it wasn't, the, it wasn't necessarily the reason he failed. The, the reason he failed was because of the hazards, which could be to do with uh, doing ramps and junction in the wrong gear. Or, uh, and of course progress as well the other one then reverse competently so the tester was told him in the in the feedback that he took way too long to reverse around the corner he was yielding to every tom dick and harry and he was trying to be so cautious and so careful that he ended up looking indecisive and you know lacking confidence okay now i've got a lot of questions from people or, or comments like asking me then do i have to yield to everybody on reverse or do i have to yield to, to some people or whatever like that now as I, again it will it will depend on the situation but if you're reversing around the corner okay you might you might notice that there will be cars behind you and you, you can still keep going okay so if you're reversing around the corner and a car is let's say 120 meters away from you okay um you do not have to stop just because a car appears behind you, okay? That car could subsequently park on the left. It could take another turn off and not interfere with you at all. And he or she may very well come up behind you and look to overtake you, okay? Fair enough. So you only have to yield when he gets closer, okay? So let's say when he's about 50 or 60 meters away and he looks like he's not stopping and picking up speed. Well, then, then stop for him, okay? But if you stop just because he's only just turned in the roadway behind you, he still has to travel, like if he's 100 metres from you, he still has to travel 50 more metres. Now that, that means you're losing time there and you, you could be making a little bit more progress on the reverse and you could be getting it done a little bit quicker if you had if you, if you kept going slowly. And remember, you are reversing, like, like your reversing light is coming on. So the other car is going to know what you're doing. You will hopefully be looking behind. You, as the learner driver, will be going very very slowly when you're reversing so there's not really a great deal of danger there you know so just bear that in mind and it's the same with pedestrians like like a lot of learner drivers seem to yield to any pedestrian that's nearby the truth is you don't have to yield to every pedestrian it will always depend on how close they are to you so if there's a pedestrian walking beside you on the path for example as long as that pedestrian is is kind of like say for example where your passenger window is that's fine because you can keep an eye on them there and you can see them there. Now, if the pedest if the pedestrian subsequently picks up speed because you've stopped or whatever like that for someone else and the pedestrian gets into your blind spot, well, then you have to be careful because if they cross the road or something like that, they will have right of way then. 
and if they're in your blind spot it's a bit trickier but if they're in your peripheral vision or in your kind of one o'clock 12 o'clock 11 o'clock zone and that's fine just keep going like but keep an eye on them like you know this is why when you're reversing around a corner you have to be looking at what i like to call the five points okay they would be uh five points like the left shoulder the the wing mirror and when you're looking in your left wing mirror for example your all your peripheral vision is also catching anything else that's around the mirror here the, the right side mirror and the other shoulder and then come back the same way like that so, so you've, you've 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 good all-round observation then okay and if there's a pedestrian behind you just just like break it into two okay ask yourself the question is the pedestrian far away or is he close to you okay and just break it down that way because at the end of the day you can't be taking too long to reverse around the corner you have to be practical you have to be realistic and you have to be a little bit flexible okay so just judge each situation on its own merits there okay so anyway that's that driving test candidate there unfortunately he was too slow too hesitant um he may have done ramps in the wrong gears few observational issues as well and the reverse took way 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 too long uh, but overall he was a decent enough driver with good control of the car and he just needs to get a bit of confidence and drive in a bit more of a realistic way and i'm sure he'll have a great chance next time okay right let's get back to some comments then folks um let me see here now where we're keen was the last one there um and then we had who who shah shahid just saying the videos are very helpful thank you you're very welcome who shahid if i'm saying that correctly you're most welcome thanks for your kind words um sip sip we jingui i think it is saw a tiktok video when you stopped and took your binoculars yes i that was the most re one of the most recent tiktok videos actually yes yeah, so i hope you enjoyed that sip sip away if i'm saying that correctly i made that in response to some of the mad stories i'm hearing about uh learner drivers who when they're on their driving test they're they're checking their blind spots at junctions and roundabouts and traffic lights and all this kind of stuff and sit, instead of focusing on what's ahead of them like because if you're at a junction or you're at a, at a crossroads it's not really that important what's behind you because they have to stay behind you like they have they have rights they have rights but they have responsibilities as well so if you're at a junction just focus on what's like to your sides and what's in front of you. you don't have to be going checking blind spots and shoulders when you're when you're at a junction okay and in that tiktok video i was kind of doing a bit of a ninja combat style where i had my binoculars on me i came to a t-junction I, I i leapt out of the car i did a bit of a roll and i started looking at my binoculars and all that it's just a bit of a piss take on how some learner drivers completely take the piss with observation and some of it could be just cultural differences like i said people from the indian subcontinent seem to have this misconception and uh, so it could be just genuinely just genuine lack of knowledge which is why you, ha you should really get lessons or watch my videos do something like just don't don't turn up to a test without some kind of guidance or some kind of help because you could be setting yourself up for for a big fall okay so any and as I said, my TikTok handle is there, Dane Tai One. If you want to check it out and give me a follow, that'll be great. Um, someone just donated five euro there on the super chat, I think, and I want to say whoever that is, thank you very much. I'll get down to the down to it in a second, but much appreciated. Um, Shauna, oh here we go. Sorry, um, Wills, Willsy, yes, Willsy. Mistakes. Well, and just to get to Willsy's comment there straight away, since he super chatted. Mistakes to avoid. Be careful when taking the real driving exam tips thanks well was he first of all thank you again for your for your kind donation there's so many <coughs> so many tips i can tell you was it i don't know where to start okay if i think you're asking about tips and i wish you every look by the way my email is there um there dayandtai at gmail.com but let me share some tips with you based on this guy okay so um first of all at all at junctions and roundabouts Lots of looks, okay? Forget your blind spots. Lots of looks at junctions and roundabouts. Normally do ramps in second gear. Don't do them too fast. Don't do them too slow. Judge them individually. Um, based on this test, don't be too slow. Show confidence. Be decisive. If it's safe to go, just go. Don't be too hesitant. That's not going to impress the tester, okay? Um, on the reverse, look behind, okay? You don't have to give way to everybody and keep it slow because when, you're, when, you, do a very, when you do a reverse around the corner, it's very, very slow you've got a much better chance of um, doing it well, okay? So best of luck to you, Willsey, and thanks again. So back to my other comments then. Um, 
and I want to just uh, there's another thing I want to show you on roundabouts here as well. But I just want to get a few comments done first. Um, where are we? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, bear with me. Here we go. Shauna was uh, Shauna was next. Shauna Mullery, 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 I think. Super nervous. My first driving test on Monday, the twenty third. Is that uh, what are we now? Fifteenth. Um, is that this month? I think probably this month. Is it? Um, yeah, tomorrow's the sixteenth. So yeah. So Sean, the best of luck to you. My advice to you, if you're feeling nervous, focus on your breathing. Look into mindfulness techniques, meditation, and if you live in the moment, live in the present moment. Like right now, I have a pen in this hand, and I have a water bottle in this hand. So I'm very conscious of the fact that I can feel the plastic here, and I can feel the pen here. So right now, my mind is completely focused on the plastic and the feel of the pen. So because my mind is completely focused on these two things, I'm literally thinking of nothing else. I don't care about anything else. So the nerves don't have a chance to uh, infiltrate my body, you know. If you want to email me, Shauna, um, my email is down there, um, daintai at gmail.com. I can send you a few videos I've made on how to deal with driving test nerves, okay? But living in the moment is certainly a good tip. Um, it takes practice, though. It's one thing for me to say it. I mean, it, it takes time and practice to develop as well. Um, let me see where next one then after Shauna was Rebecca Lacey has her test on the 18th and nervous and also excited. Yeah, same advice to you, Rebecca. Live in the moment. Email me if you have any questions or if you want me to send you on those videos. But... It's good that you're nervous, both you, Rebecca, and Shauna, because it, like, if you're nervous, that means you're taking this thing seriously. It means that you're going to, um, <clears throat> that the, the event that we're talking about, in this case, the driving test, means a lot to you. Because if it didn't, and if you didn't take it seriously, then you probably wouldn't be nervous. So that's good. And remember, nerves are not all bad. They can help you concentrate. If you channel them properly, they can. Um, Rafida... Mujahid, I think it is. I'm doing stage two instructor's test next week. Any advice, please? Yes. Best look, first of all. Um, There are some driving schools that can help you out with that and give lessons to you, depending on where you are. Um, <clears throat> I would say the same to you. Live in the moment. Make sure you're okay reversing around the left corner and the right corner. And I'm sure they'll do an emergency stop with you as well. I remember on my on my stage show it's a long time ago now, but the the examiner was asking me about brake pads and about um brake discs and all that kind of stuff. So I I, do, I remember getting asked a few questions about that, but that was a that was a that was like two thousand and eight when I did mine, like so. But if you just live in the moment, take it one road at a time, and you know you should be fine. Um, you can email me if you have any questions. I I have a video on advanced driving tips. I'm sure that will help you too, there, Rafida. But best of luck with it. Uh, there's plenty of there's plenty of work out there anyway for driving instructors at the moment. Um, Jan Kowalski, I got twenty one. Sorry, twenty one. D, or is that a smiley face? Sorry, twenty one. Twenty one, is that grade two marks? Is it? I think I think I I think you're talking about twenty one grade twos, which is a probably a little bit too much to pass a test, as you can imagine. Um, I'll. <clears throat> I'll get back to that, or you can clarify that uh, further down, Jan, if you want. Uh, Keen there again, it was a failed... Oh, yeah, yeah, so I, I, we got to that point. So if you get six grade two marks in the one area, like this fella here on the report sheet here got uh, nine overall, nine blue marks on progress. That on its own is a fail. Um, Roberta Men Menegato, hi then, how to be more confident on driving? I have done loads of lessons already and I feel a bit of fear when I'm driving. Instructor said, I overthink what's going on with other drivers. I have my own car since August. Um, yeah, it, it comes down to as well, like a lot of it, Roberta, will come down to practice, okay? The more practice you get, the better you're going to be. But it, it's probably going to happen over a, in a gradual way, over a longer term. Because the way you want to feel about your driving now is the way you want to feel. It's not the way you are feeling. So you have to give things time. You know, then the more you practice, the more confidence you get. Every time you drive on the road, you should feel better, okay? 
Well, I'll say what I said to the previous people there. If you live in the moment and you just, like when you're out driving and you know that you have a left turn coming up, okay? Just put all your focus on that left turn. Think of some of the acronyms I would have mentioned, like like MISS, M-I-S-S, MISS. That's to help people in case they have dyslexia or they're having trouble remembering. Um, it's about the general things you do coming up to a junction, M-I-S-S. So M for mirrors, I for indicator, S for slowdown, and then S again for second gear or possibly stop if you need to stop. So there, there are things you can focus on, but if you're nervous or you're suffering from lack of confidence, nerves, whatever like that, it, it all comes down to the mindset, okay? The thoughts that you allow into your mind, okay? So if you live in the moment, focus on what you're doing rather than what happened in the past or what might or might not happen in the future. If you focus on what you're doing right now, the junction right now, the mirrors that's required there, the getting down the gears, if you put all your focus on that, you're probably less likely to be nervous. And that is my advice to you, okay? But remember, practice makes perfect. Um. So, and she has her own car, she's saying, yeah. And like I said, yeah, it does take time. Yander says, um, but you have five months wrong. Yeah, you were talking about that. John Kerwin from, where's John from? Mallow, isn't it? Mallow. John is a driving instructor from Mallow um, in Cork. And John's a good old skin. I've never met John now, but I would have talked to him online and comments and emails and all that. So if you're down in Mallow or anywhere around that area, check out Dr. Bob School of Motoring um, for driving lessons down there. So John says, well done then. Thank you for sharing your vast knowledge. You're, you're very kind, John. Keep up the great work from Dr. Bob School of Motoring. Yes, folks, check out Dr. Bob. You know, <clears throat> I'd say... I'd say he's a, I, I, I've never met the chap, but I'd say he's a very good and very capable driving instructor because he shared with me some absolutely wonderful handouts and sheets and theory questions and some signs that I, I hadn't even seen because there were very specific signs to do at road work. So I'd be thinking like if, if John, like Dr. Bob School of Morning goes to that trouble to have these really high quality handouts, then I'd say he's a pretty good instructor. So check him out, folks, if you're anywhere down around Mallow and Cork. John Carwin, under the name Dr. Bob School of Motoring. And thanks for your kind words, John. Much appreciated. Jan Kowalski again. And do you check blind spot when changing lane? Well, that is a good question, Jan. That is a good question. The answer is yes, most of the time, but maybe not all the time. So I would say if you're changing lanes, generally speaking, and you will find this uh, confirmed in the Highway Code and in the RSA Rules of the Road Book, okay? Just so you know, this is the most complete, up-to-date information. I have absolutely zero doubt, zero and, and 100 and a million percent confidence telling you this, this is the rules, okay? If you're changing lanes, according to me and all the professional guidebooks out there, yes, you should check your blind spot. But whatever you do, do not check it like this. The shoulder, no, no, no. If you're changing lanes, you check your blind spot like this. You see that? Or, or the other side, like that. So you're looking with the eyes, you're, you're looking to the very corner of your eyes. You, <clears throat> If you're changing lanes, do not let your chin go anywhere beyond the shoulder, okay? It's not required. You don't need to do that. You cannot take your eyes off the road for too long. Furthermore, if you think that it's very, very busy in front of you, okay, I, would, I wouldn't bother checking lens. I just, just, just trust the mirrors, just, just rely on the mirrors, okay? Just double check the mirrors maybe instead. But if, if, if there's a lot of stuff in front of you, like 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 a lot of cyclists or, or a lot of children or something like that. But on the other side, if it's fairly quiet in front of you, like from what you can see in front of you, that there's, 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 there's nothing basically in front of you, very, very quiet. And there may well be a bit of activity behind you, like some joggers or cyclists or whatever, whatever you want to say. Well, then I would definitely be advising you to check the blind spot then. It's the age old saying that I, that I say all the time, and I know I'm repeating myself, it will always depend on the situation because a good driver must, must, must not apply a one size fits all rule or policy or action to uh, certain aspects or all aspects of driving nearly because it will always depend on the situation and how busy it is, what other traffic are doing, where you are, etc., etc. okay? So generally speaking, yeah, if it's safe, Check the blind spot change in lanes, but just remember it's a quick shoulder glance. It's not even shouldn't even really call it a blind spot to be honest. Um frostbite, is it? 
Frostbite 337. It's how many times they got a grade 2 mark. Oh, sorry, what was that Frostbite? Did I miss something there? Oh, it's probably about 21, I'd say. Yeah, thanks, Frostbite. Yeah. Melissa, is it true if you get most theory questions wrong, you can't fail your test? Okay, well, there's a double negative if ever I've seen one. Yes, Melissa. If you get all your questions wrong, all your road signs wrong, okay, you can still only get one grade two mark, okay, like one blue mark on the sheet here, okay. You cannot fail your test on the theory and road signs alone. Now, if you get eight driving faults on the actual practical driving part of the test, and then before you went out, you got, uh, you lost a grade two mark on the theory, well, then that's going to fail you, but but it's not going to fail you on its own. It's just going to fail you because it's an accumulation of all the other marks as well, okay? But you cannot fail on the theory alone, okay? Now, I just so try not to be too worried and nervous about that. But at the same time, it's good to try and be prepared and get off to a good start because, you you know, it shows confidence and then the tester will have more confidence in you. So do your best. But just remember, it's not the end of the world if you get a few questions and signs wrong or even if you get them all wrong, okay? Um, Jan Kowalski again. Instructor told me, that you can get marked for progress on the straight uh, when you accelerate too quickly. Um, let me see, progress on the straight, anyway. I suppose you could, but I'm thinking if you accelerate too quickly and then you make up for it by driving really, really slow in the 30, 40, 50, 60 metres after that, you could actually, yeah, I've, I've seen that happen before, but I'm probably thinking a bit too deep about it there, like, doesn't really make sense if you accelerate too quickly, you lose marks on going too slow. But then if you try to make up for it by going too slow after it, well then maybe then, maybe possibly then, yeah, I can understand. Frostbite, tri oh sorry, I don't know, Frostbite 327. Uh, here we go. Just a thank you for the vehicle checks video you did because I have the same car as you. You have Opel Corsa, good man. I've always had Opel Corsa, uh, find them a great car. Uh, and good good for learners too yeah always petrol i know i've never got diesel if, you, if you're if you're driving in town or doing driving tests in town i always find petrol cars are the best they're just better for maneuvering around mini roundabouts and speed bumps and all that do you find the clutch very light though i find it hard to take off quickly with it nah, not really i i tell you i don't find the clutch to be too bad to be honest with you but the one the thing i do find a little bit um a little bit of a pain is the footrest is so close to the clutch that very often learners are, are kind of scraping their feet off the clutch rest um, because they can't fit their foot in the gap between the footrest and the clutch. And that's causing a few little minor problems. But then once they get used to it, it's no problem, you know. But overall, I find the clutch to be... I find it okay. Yeah, I don't... I don't... I don't. I think I think with any car, when, once you get used to it and once you get comfortable, you, 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 it just becomes normal. And I'm sure that'll be the same for you. Um... Wilsey, thank you very much. I think we've got another five euro there from you. I much appreciated. Thank you for that. Um, any super chats out there, folks? Really appreciate it. You can you can on 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 any videos you can you can tickle the heart button as well to give a super thanks. So, really appreciate that. Thank you. Moving on then to Claire. Um, and who shall it? And I'm just gonna see if I can. I have a little thing up here. I wanna I wanna show you. And uh, let me see where am I? Claire, have. Claire, has her driving test on Tuesday, so the best luck to you. Your videos are really helping my nerves. Thank you. You're most welcome, Claire. I'm glad to see that the videos are helping you. I have a couple of videos on nerves as well and about living in the moment. And the things, a couple of weeks ago, there a video on eight things you should do on the morning of your test or before your driving test. So just email me, daintai at gmail.com if you want me to send those to you. Or you could look for them as well. But the very best luck to you, Claire. Just take it one road at a time. Live in the moment. When you're driving on a road, focus on that road. Don't think about what's going to happen in the future. Don't think about what happened in the past. You can't really control it either. But the one thing you can control is what you're doing in the present moment, okay? In a car. So just bear that in mind. Live in the moment. Who, Shahlid, can you explain... Or sorry, you explained very well today on this report, the one on the screen, I'm presuming. I'm expecting my <clears throat> uh, first test i think soon and i was doing the mistakes oh my god you were doing blind spot checks at junctions and and signals but it's very clear now yeah please who um who shahid if i'm saying pardon me if i'm not if i'm not saying that correctly but 
you just watch my videos on observation turning right, observation turning left, I, I'm also on position turning right and position turning left. Okay, just just search them on YouTube. You'll find them. They're, they're there. They're all they're all there. They're, they're completely free of charge. There's 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 no paywall, uh, no member, none of that stuff. My videos are all free, completely free, so you folks out there can achieve your driving goals. Just look at the way I do it. Okay, I'm coming up to a junction. I check my mirrors. I indicate. I check the mirrors again, maybe a second time. At the junction, I'm looking. Like looking before the line, okay. I'm at a stop line. I'm looking both ways. No blind spot checks. Looking both ways, and then just as I go over the line, then whether I'm going left or right, as I'm going over the stop line or the yield line, okay. I'm just giving one last look then, and then, and then, focus on the road ahead of you, okay. The key to being a good driver is focusing on what's ahead of you, what's in front of you, okay. Not what's behind you. We don't care about that. Well, well, we do care about it, but it's not. It's not important. It's what's what's in front of you, okay. Remember. The reason your rear view mirror is so much smaller than your front windscreen is because it's so much more important to think and to focus on where you're going instead of where you come from, okay? The mirrors are very important, but they're not as important as looking ahead and planning ahead for the duration of your driving test. So please don't forget that. And who, Shalid, the best of luck to you. We have a test that's coming up soon, okay? The best of luck to you. Email me if you have any questions or tune in next week. Hope to be back here next week or in two weeks, whatever. For another live stream maybe you can let us know how you get on okay now folks i have a little sheet up here that i am just wondering if i can get up here um it's on uh roundabouts okay so i just want to see there now yeah so i hope you can see that there on screen it's a picture of a roundabout there um you shouldn't you shouldn't see the um driving test sheet now what i find <clears throat> both in the lessons i do here in wexford okay and in the emails is that people are taking the wrong position when it comes to roundabouts okay now if you're going straight on a roundabout you have to make an effort at least to go around the roundabout okay do you see like do you see like the green line over there or if i'm pointing the right way over there the, the the green line okay if it's a one lane roundabout okay do not um, follow the red arrow there where you're literally just cutting through the roundabout okay I like I, I, I literally had this conversation with a drive and test supervisor a number of weeks ago a drive and test supervisor this is the guy who's the boss of the testers okay if you're on a single lane roundabout okay single lane there's one lane on the approach pardon me one lane on the roundabout and then one lane exiting off it you have got to make an effort to go around okay just like the green line is there, okay? Please, please, please bear that in mind, folks. And don't follow the red line where you're just cutting through, okay? If, I know if there's one lane, there's no there's no real danger, you're not doing any damage, but it, it kind of, it, it can it can kind of be a bad habit and it could get the tester thinking, well, geez, if, if she cuts through there when there's one lane, I mean, she might cut through when there's two lanes. I mean, that's, that's not really, it's not really a right mindset for the tester to be in, is there? Some roundabouts will be bigger, some will be smaller. Some roundabouts will be, marked, will be marked out into into two lanes, okay? And that's a lot easier then, so you just have to have good lane discipline. And remember as well that when you're on the roundabout, just keep in your lane, keep in the centre of your lane, so you, you don't want to straddle the green like centre circle there in the middle, or the, or the white centre circle, whatever it is, and you don't want to straddle the outside, you want to stay in your lane. But if it's just one lane, you need to stay relatively central, but a little bit more left. Some some roundabouts now will be one lane, but they'll be really, really wide as well. And then you can be a little bit more left then in that case, okay? It will always depend on the actual roundabout because you don't need me to tell you folks, there's so many different roundabouts out there, okay? They're, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some of them have the little, you know, the little white thing in the middle, the white little dot in the middle, the, the mini roundabouts, like. And believe it or not, it, it like it's actually okay to drive over the white thing, but don't, do it if you can avoid it though do you know what i mean like if you're driving a big van or a larger vehicle then you're, you're probably not going to be able to avoid the the white thing in the middle because the vehicle is too big but if you're driving a little you know a smaller car like an opel corsa or a ford fiesta or, or a nissan micro or something like that there's, there should be no problem avoiding the the white thing then you know in the middle you should be easily able to go around it and, and what can help you as well whether it's a bigger roundabout like what you see on screen here or whether it's the smaller mini ones what can also help you is when you come up to the roundabout okay try not to have the car like excuse my phone here as an example try not to have the car like dead straight at the line okay when, when you're stopping at a roundabout 
because if it's dead straight, then that that you might well be encouraging just to go like to go straight, like you know, as in to to go too close to the center thing, and you may have to give a sudden correction then to fix stuff. So, in the second or two before you stop at the roundabout, okay, if you have to stop, or even if you don't have to stop, same thing. Try and just have your 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 car turned a little bit to the left like this, okay. And um, so if you stop or if you're just going slowly here, um, you're you're then in a better position and you have better ability to go around the roundabout. Um, even if you're going right, you still have to go around to get to the right, okay? So in summary, folks, if it's a single lane roundabout, don't follow the red arrows that you see there. Try your best to follow the green arrows where you go around the outside a little bit, um, if possible, and if it's safe, of course, okay? And look, at, at all times, just to finish on this, at all times when you're coming to roundabouts, always, always be very, very aware and watch out for markings and signs that might kind of dictate to you where you need to be. Like you might have to be in the right lane, for example, to go straight or whereas normally you'd be in the right lane to go right. So it just depends. Uh, watch out for signs and markings um, just so you know what lane to be in and just so you have a good idea of where you're going, okay? All right then, so let me see. Have I got everything I wanted to get done with you? I've Yeah, I have everything here I wanted to get done and I'm just gonna finish up now because we're over the hour mark now, folks. I'm gonna finish up here with a few comments um, before before I go, okay? I'm gonna, just gonna, there's a good few there now, so I'm gonna try and get through them all as best I can, okay? Right, where are we? Uh, here we go, John, uh, is it John Matthew I think is next? I'm just making sure John is next, I have him here. Right, John Matthew <coughs> says, clear the test on my second try. Your videos help. Thank you. You're very welcome, John. <coughs> Pardon me. You're very welcome. I'm delighted to hear that, John. Uh, as I said to many people, I like to make the videos uh, free. I like creating good quality content so people like you, John, and everybody else out there can, can use the content to achieve their driving goals. And delighted to hear that. So best wishes and safe travels to you. Spare van. Well... In case you don't know, folks, I am a great lover of the Irish language. Um, it's Bralom Angus is Farlom the kind of Osquilge. Uh, Angus Spervan, uh, Anam Alling or Fod. So Spervan means uh, like it's like a sky woman. So it's like an angel. And so Spear is like Spear is like um sky, just so the spare in the sky, and Van is like woman. Okay, so it's like an angel or um, is there, I think it's angel anyway. It's not it's not a word I'd use too often, but yeah, sky woman anyway. Um, and she and Spearvan says best to look at Claire Ashling. Yes, of course, best to look to Claire as well. Um, Roberta, again, uh, sorry, Roberta Men Mengato. Yeah, let's uh, let's oh, let, sorry, let's thumbs up the video. She says I was <laughs> trying to work it out there. Sorry, uh, only seven likes at the moment. Yeah, well, any even one like is is better than no likes. So, but thank you very much for the support there, Roberta. I really appreciate that. Yeah, folks, that reminds me. Look, if you if you like the video, if you enjoy it, uh, throw in a comment, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, really appreciate any support. Um, Claire Ashton, thank you. Yes, best of luck to you, Claire Ashton. Hope you do it. Um, I'm here to help. If you need any help, let me know. Email is there. Um, who, Shahalid again, what's the best practice when there is on small flood on road 80 kilometers? Well, try, yeah, so try and avoid the puddle, first of all. And sometimes it can be a good idea just to just to move a little bit to the center of the road because very often the center of the road is a little bit higher and more elevated than the than the left hand side of the road or, or the left part of your lane. It will always depend on how deep the puddle is or how much is there. The best thing you can do is, is slow down. Avoid it if you can, but if you have to go through it, slow down. Be very careful not to splash any pedestrians or cyclists nearby. And it can be a good idea as well, just to tap on the brakes for a couple of seconds after you come out of them because it helps dry the brakes and it's good practice as well to, to dry them out, okay? But you just have to treat it as it comes and uh, do your best uh, and kind of just do do what you can there. Um, Wilsey got 37 on my theory after two fails. Now to start the driving lessons. Well, the very best luck to you, Wilsey, in your driving lessons. Um. You have to get 12 lessons. Uh, you have to get your permit and all first. You have to do your eye test, get your permit. So the very, very best luck to you in that. Um, I hope everything works out well for you there. Um, let me see. Uh, where have we got now? Next one. Nu uh, nu Nuan. Uh, we're, we're Cody, I think. Thank you. You're very welcome. 
Zach Osman, if there are parked cars on both sides of the road and me and another driver are coming from the opposite side, both come in and I have to get close to other cars, is this okay? Well, Zach, that is the classic case of an open question. Yeah. Look, in short, it is okay. Now, look at I'm there's, there's, a, there's about 101 different ways this can go because it will depend on the amount of space. But it could be okay for you both to go by. And, and maybe, you, maybe you're not able to give a door length of space. And if you can't give the proper door length, well, then that's not the end of the world. You'd have to slow down then to make up for the fact that you can't give a door, a door length, okay? But the, the key thing here is to plan ahead, okay? If you see that the other driver is in a bit of a rush and he doesn't have too much intention to slow down, well, then you should take the initiative then and slow down and try and pull in if you can but if you can't it's a kind of a situation where you have to play it by ear a little bit and slow down maybe roll into first gear and maybe you could both just kind of go really really slowly past each other but i'm pretty sure the driving tester will be um flexible in that situation because they're they are told to be i was talking to a supervisor I said i was talking to a supervisor a few weeks ago they are encouraged and told to be flexible in in situations that are a little bit tricky let's say like like what you describe uh, because sometimes it's not always possible to give a door length. You kind of have to give them a, less than a door length. But you can just slow down to make up for the fact that you can't. Um, the Irish Ace Delaney. Hi Dan, quick question. Uh, any tips for what windows I should be looking out of on the reverse? I certainly have. I find it difficult <clears throat> to look around the seat out the back window when practicing well why is that now is i mean do you have is it it i mean do you have some some ailment or is it just you don't feel secure looking away from the mirrors okay now in your case i would say take a graduated approach to it try and keep practicing in in a kind of a safe and quiet area and once you get more accomplished and once you get more comfortable with the reverse and the techniques involved with the steering and all that you will then be able i hope to be able to look behind a bit more the, to answer your question, you need to be looking out your back windows more often than your side mirrors, okay? So you should be looking out the, over the left shoulder particularly, and also the right shoulder. If you check out my reverse around the corner videos, you'll, you'll see me doing it there in, in that like. But when you're reversing, generally you have five five points, okay? So you've got the, the back window, okay? And the left mirror, and the right the center mirror, sorry, the right mirror, and then the, the right shoulder. And while you're doing your five points, you see your, your peripheral vision is also taking into account a lot of things that are around you as well okay so just bear that in mind um you, yes you can use your mirrors but but you have to look behind you a little bit more okay i'm going to get back to the rest of the comments folks because i apologize here i forgot to share some updates and news i had with you there so I, I normally do this at the start but i think i just got straight into the report sheet and the comments so just bear with me there um i want to just share with you some just some important tips and updates that uh come in handy for you if you're doing a test or if you've one coming up <clears throat> excuse me sorry now you may or may not be aware of this but the rsa um do provide compensation to a learner driver who may have had their driving test cancelled with less than 24 hours notice okay you can get compensated up to a maximum of 85 euro plus the cost of hiring a driving school car if your driving test has been cancelled with less than 24 hours notice okay so they're trying to uh, give you comp compensation there for loss of earnings but you will have to have a letter from your employer confirming this and also a stamp from the adi which is your approved driving instructor if you had been renting um driving school car uh, any you, you would then email any claims into compensation claims at rsa.ie so they will provide a service for you if you've been out of pocket due to a driving test being cancelled but remember they will not provide any compensation if a driving test has to be cancelled because of bad weather, because that's considered like uh, an a, a act of God, let's say. So they will, you know, you won't have to pay for a retest. They'll just they'll just send you out another test uh, free of charge in that case. Okay. Next one then, the testers are still driving with the with the windows open in the car. Okay, and this is for ventilation and keep keep fresh air in the car. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing overall. I think it's I think it's good. I think fresh air in the car is good. It keeps hopefully keeps you more alert and um you know helps you concentrate more but it will depend on the tester some testers might have the windows down about, about 15 inches some testers just have them down two or three inches it will it will depend um at the moment i'm sure you're aware of this but driving test cans no longer have to wait for a phone call in the car before the test they just proceed straight into the waiting room and the tester will call them in then when it's their time to start the driving test 
okay make sure you have your learner permit the only thing you need when you're doing your driving test is your learner permit okay so whatever you do don't forget the learner permit okay um the rsa are tr are slowly very slowly trying to bring in a system whereby the driving instructor may be able to sit in the back while the driving test candidate does the test so you'll be doing the driving test the examiner will be sitting in the passenger seat and possibly a driving instructor uh, your driving instructor will be in the back okay so this is what happens in england sometimes and i think it's a great thing it might not be for everybody now it's not it's not going to suit every learner um but i think it's, it could act as reassurance to some learners okay so they're trying to bring it in but i've no update because it, there was a meeting about this but there was no firm dates on it and so i can't give any more information on that only to say that it's being considered and hopefully it'll come in soon because i think it will give more accountability to the whole driving testing if you have another set of eyes and ears in the driving test as well as your own because you know a learner driver they don't, they don't take everything in they can kind of get a bit nervous and they can forget things and they can you know misinterpret things so if the driving instructor is there the driving teacher like it can you know i think it I think it has potential to be a good thing similarly sat satellite navigation is going to be tested very soon but again i've no dates on it they're, they're dragging their heels on it i don't know what's this i don't know what the delay this has been going this has been done in england for the last two or three years so um i think being tested on your ability to navigate with a satellite navigation is on the way i think it's a good thing i think it's a reflection of modern driving um and it is coming in but just not quite yet i've no firm date on it i mean in the driving test they're asking you these hand signals like you know like right um left and you know slow down and stop i don't i, I can't remember ever using these hand signals i mean i think i might have used them on a horse or something once like but i don't think i'd ever like, like and these these are an archaic old way of doing it. and then a modern thing like say parking or parallel parking or satellite satellite navigation driving for some reason they're dragging their heels on but they'll have something like hand signals in the driving test which is belongs like a about two generations ago but this is the rsa folks trying to drag them into the modern age is like trying to pull teeth from a hen okay um as you probably know by now there is uh, an extension with the nct so if your if your vehicle has an nct that's out of date if it's out of date by less than three months okay less than three months the driving test should go ahead okay as long as you can prove that you have another test booked in the future now I've heard stories of some driving testers still not taking out driving test candidates even though it's under the three month threshold and I'm just wondering is, is, do you have any information on that or has it happened to you but the rules are very very simple if it's if your NCT is out of date by less than three months and you can prove you you've, you can prove you have a date coming up in the future the driving test will go ahead and um, some driving testers are acting a maggot on this and they're kind of given the old health and safety thing that they love doing um but that's the rules anyway because there's such a backlog now with ncts i mean it's it's the some nct centers are, are so backlogged and it's affecting people want to do the driving test so this flexibility is is a good thing uh unfortunately some testers are kicking up over it and they're, they're kicking their, their union is kicking up as well saying it's a health and safety i'm sure how, like the same testers probably have a car themselves that could be could have an nct out date like you know so look it's just this typical typical testers where you know kicking up over little things and resisting change and resisting flexibility it's not new to the civil service really is it um moving on then um my road safety I, i'm sure you know that if you if you need to manage or handle your driving test application you have to do it on the my road safety online portal you can't ring them everything gets managed there there has been reports of some people having trouble managing and navigating the my road safety online portal and a lot of this could be down to the fact that it is iPhone or iPad users, okay? Um, I've been hearing stories about, um, just anecdotally a few stories about, for some reason the software that they use doesn't always interact well with iPhone or iPads, okay? I don't think there's any problem with Samsung but or Android, so um, just something to be aware of there, folks. The, the overall, the system does work pretty well. I think I think the the website is pretty good. I think it's a it's a good system. It's a, it's a one size fits all system, um. But just you know, like everything, there will be a few teething issues. So just just let me just to let me let me know. I'll I'll be signing off here soon. But if you have any updates on that or any info on that, just just let me know there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. If you do fail your test, you will be able to 
you will get another booking invitation within six to eight weeks. Now, this could be increased to eight or ten weeks, depending on the test center, okay? But remember, if you do fail a test, first of all, don't think of it as a fail, okay? Just think of it as a stepping stone to success. It's, it's like a learning experience, okay? But if you do fail, you will hopefully, um, well, I say hopefully, you will get a fast-track retest, okay? So you'll get a retest in about six or eight weeks, but that can depend on the test center, because I'm going to share a few waiting times now with you about the test center, it will be different depending on what test center you're in, okay? Um, so, let me see. Yeah, so just some waiting time. And again, this is another thing that can be go up and down. There is quite a long waiting time in places like Dunleary and Dean's Grange. It can be 41 weeks, which that's a fair, that's a fair whack now. Similarly, in Galway, in Westside in Galway, it can be about 39 weeks, which is a long time to wait. Drogheda, Drogheda was always was Drogheda was always a black spot. That's a large town, so it has a, a big population centre there. Thirty eight weeks. Shannon, Navan, and Limerick are all very very similar around 37, 38 weeks. Okay. Um, some of the shortest waiting times are in Bonkrana up in County Donegal, where it is only about eleven or twelve weeks. So that's not too bad. That's that's kind of close to what they would like to have for a waiting, a waiting time. Um, let me see what other ones then where it's not too bad is Turles and Tipperary Town. They're not too bad. Uh, Castle Bar in Mayo is okay. You're talking about three months for all these, by the way, about, about 12, 13, 14 weeks. And Monaghan Town as well. So you'll see there that some of the more rural places like Monaghan and Tip and Castle Bar, they have a slightly less long waiting time but some of the more more um urban centers like Drogheda and Galway and Dean's Grange and Dublin and all that uh can be a bit you know a bit on the long side although Charles Charlestown in Dublin I believe is is has come down a good bit lately it's, it's down to about 14 or 15 weeks but I <clears throat> I could be talking about this in two weeks time it could be completely different you know I do know that the RSA are in the process of taking on 30 new testers with with uh contract contracts out to try and reduce the load. So I believe there's 15 uh, new testers taken on in the last few weeks and 15 more are going to be taken on in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully that will make an impact and bring the waiting times down. Um, yeah, and they're the main things there I wanted to say, just kind of updates and things like that, okay? Now, folks, let's get back to the comments here then and I'll be signing off very soon. Let me see. I might have some questions here for you. Um, <clears throat> Alien123, hi then, I want to say thanks for the videos, I've been watching, the, oh sorry, hang on, hang on, here we go, I've been watching them like crazy the last while, you guys are probably sick of the sound of my voice now, I passed my test in Gory, oh you're not too far from me then in Gory, uh, one grade two and two grade ones, that was a pretty good test now, second attempt, first attempt had 11 grade two, you weren't too bad on the first attempt even then actually, <clears throat> the first time, I done my test. I failed in the last five minutes. The weather was horrendous that day. I was doing fifty-five in an eighty road. Came to a stop sign of equal importance, but cars did not stop. Who didn't stop? The the you didn't stop, is it? Or or the other cars? But I'm I'm not quite sure. But anyway, you you weren't too far off in the first test, and the second test you you looks like you drove really really well there because you you got very few marks. Um, gory can be a bit tricky at times because um, I I don't do gory. It's it's a little bit far away. It's about half an hour away from me. I'm I'm kind of in Wexford town, but <clears throat> sometimes the traffic lights in gory. There's a lot of traffic lights in gory where you have to roll up into the middle. The main street can be very very busy in gory. It's a it's a busy little market town, and uh, I know traffic lights there can cause a few headaches. But um, overall, it's it's not too bad. It's it's, not, it's probably about average, I suppose, for the country in terms of passing. But Alien one two three. Well done on passing you. You drove really well there, and uh, you know you you. I wouldn't say you failed the first time. You just learned a lot the first time. You know you you if you don't fail, you you either you either succeed or you learn. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Vojcik, Dobra Vietor. This report sheet reminded me a little bit of dash cam footage from a driving test from the U.S. I believe it was California. Learner was under a false impression that you must stop before every single turn, no matter what. Ironically failed for getting a critical fault. Californian ca counterpart of grade three for stopping when necessary. Or when not necessary, I think you mean. 
yeah, that's that's what this this report sheet looked like. Um, let me just sorry, just get it back there. And this this that's what it that's what it seemed like. Yeah, it looked like he this guy here was just driving too slow, like, and he was stopping when he should have kept going, and so on and so forth. So interesting comparison there, Wojciech. Sean and Mullery, what happens if you get a grade three? Well, a grade three is a serious mark. It's a very serious mark. So if you get a grade three, Sean, Sean, I'm saying it right, Sean, yeah. If you get a grade three. That's considered dangerous or potentially dangerous, and that could be anything from mounting the curb at speed to running a red light, running a stop sign, um, you know, nearly knocking down a pedestrian, um, anything that you consider dangerous or potentially dangerous. So even one, even one grade three fail, the test is over. You'll still, you'll still do the test. You'll, you'll still see out the rest of the test, like the time you have left. But there, there'll be no, um, you know, there'll be no, um, no hope of passing, like. Claire Ashling, a grade three. Yes, as I said, thank you, Claire. A grade three is a fail. Willsey, what's your dream car? Well, uh, is that directed at me, Willsey? I think it is. Would you believe, Willsey? I'm not really that much into cars. I'm not. Um, I. My dream car. What would it be? I tell you now, without without being funny, without being smart. My, in my dream car is a car that just gets me from A to B, and that's reliable. And that's safe and comfortable and has air conditioning because although we don't we're not very warm in this country, the air conditioning is 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 quite handy in the summertime. So that will be that will be uh, my opinion anyway. Yeah. Um, Alien one two three. What I found great for driving test and driving now is the small circular mirrors for blind spot may may help others too. Yeah, they can help. I don't have them myself. But there's nothing wrong with them. Um, they can certainly increase your field of view, if your your vision, your field of vision, like, and they could be a good option. I know some driving schools have them, some don't. I just have the the regular mirrors. But like, I don't, I don't really do that many lessons anyway because I'm focusing on the YouTube and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, no, they could they could be good and they're fine. They're absolutely fine to have. Just just like the reversing camera, you know, when you're if you have a modern car, you might have a reversing camera. It's absolutely fine to use your reversing camera in the driving test. Okay. It's absolutely fine to use your um, parking sensors. Perfect, no problem. I've done loads of tests with them. The electric handbrake, perfect, brilliant. Use your electric automatic handbrake. But just, just to diverge, if because if, if, some people don't notice, if you're using your electric parking brake or handbrake, whatever you want to call it, you don't have to physically let it down. Like just accelerate, bring up your clutch. It should drop down. Then if it doesn't drop, if it doesn't automatically drop, just or release, let's say disengage is the word I'm looking for. If it doesn't automatically disengage, just give it more acceleration and it will, okay? So you don't have to physically let it down. They're, they're really handy things. Okay, then. Let's see. Uh, Zach Osman, thanks so much. You're very welcome. I have my test on the 26th. Don't know if that type of situation will get me a grade 2 in positioning. Now, <clears throat> is that the... What type is that, Zach? I'm going back up here. Oh, cars on both sides, yeah. Um, yeah, look, it, it will depend on the... It'll depend on the moment, like it will depend on the situation. But just try to remember this, Zach. Most of the things in life you worry about, they don't actually happen. Just bear that in mind, you know. Our mind is great at playing tricks on us, getting us into states and worry and all that kind of stuff. So just live in the moment, treat it one road at a time, do your best. If you're not sure, slow down and stop. Creep creep through, creep slowly through the situation. And remember, the testers are human beings too. They're not all bad. They will show some flexibility if you're in a bit of a tricky spot, okay? Paul Tracy. Hi then, during my test, a rock got stuck in my exhaust. Holy smoke, if you pardon the pun. And the tester cancelled it mid-test. Yeah, I, don't, I don't blame them, to be honest with you. I've rebooked, but wondering if, will I be put on a faster waiting list? Can I get my money back? Um, okay, so if you've rebooked the test uh, in that situation where it's your fault... Now look, I'm not blaming you. I'm not. I'm not saying you put the rock in the exhaust, but I. I don't know how. That, that's a. That's the first one anyway. But <clears throat> see, you have a responsibility to make sure your car is roadworthy and in good shape. So in that case, I. I look, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I. See, they do do fast track retests, but that's that's based on the fact on you doing the test, and and failing it the normal way. In this case, you might you might go back to the bottom of the queue. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that where you end up, but I, I think you would. Um, money back? I oh, I wouldn't say so, Paul. You're barking up the wrong tree there. You you're, you know, trying to get your money back there. You see, it's kind of your fault. You have to make sure that the car is in good condition. I don't know how the rock got stuck in it, but if you're 
looking for a refund there or, or a free test to credit you, I'd say you're flogging a dead horse there, male flower. Uh, but anyway, look, best of luck next time, whenever the test is. Alien123, I failed my test first time in Gory uh, on the 30th of September. I applied that day, got an invite at the end of December. So, that's a good while, isn't it? You should have, if you failed at the end of September, you really should have got it six weeks later. Ah, probably close enough, actually, yeah. Probably close enough, to be honest with you, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Thanks for that, Alien. I was, I was curious about that for particularly being in Wexford, yeah. Um, so like the 30th of September and the uh, end, so you're talking about the end of September, October, November, so you're talking 12 weeks, yeah. Like they do try and do the retests um, six to eight weeks after you failed. But as you can see there, like it took him 12 weeks. So look, it's all well and good. Words are cheap. Actions are what matters more. So it will depend on the moment. They'll, they'll try and get you retested quicker, but look, it can take longer sometimes. Hi then, Luke McKenna. Hi then, passed the test on Wednesday. That's brilliant, Luke. And I'm wondering what I need to do to the NDLS to get my full license. Well, what you need there, Luke. Sorry, even another comment here. I didn't. Oh, it's the same comment. Sorry, it's the same, you have three comments. The same. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Must be some glitch there. You need to bring your old learner permit anyway. Um. You also need some proof. But you see, the NDLS will probably have your records anyway from when you got the permit. Um. So, but anyway, what you need to do here is first of all check out the website. Okay. And there's a there's an, the NDLS website is quite good. Go to um applying for um applying for a first time full license. Uh, www.ndls.ie and that will go through all the requirements that you need there like you need to bring your old permit in proof of pps for example the form filled out although they don't really require the form to be filled out so much anymore but it's no harm to have it anyway and uh, yeah they're the yeah, they're the main thing i've got your certificate of competency as well that you would have got but the best thing there luke for you is to just check out the NDLS website because that's the best place to go and the, where you'll get the most up-to-date information and you'll find out all you need to know there about about uh, the documents you need to bring with you okay and congratulations on passing your test Maria Nicola failing around the corner yeah it's a tricky one Maria so some people do fail on the reversion around the corner um me Michael or um Michal Kos, uh, let me see, I'm going to give a go at this. Kostanovsky? Ko Kost Kostanovsky, I think it is. Hi, Dan. Thank you again for all the tips and tricks on driving. I passed my test 10 days ago, and I already realized that real life learning is only just started. Driving in Dublin is crazy at times. Yes, you want to have your wits about you when you're driving in Dublin. Um, You know, anybody who's not used to driving there, like, there's so many different roads, so many different dr drivers can be a little bit less patient up there. But like I said, Michael, the, the learning never really stops, you know, just because you pass your test, which is great, by the way, and uh, congratulations on passing, great achievement. Uh, the learning never really stops, but best wishes to you and, and good luck on the road. Um, Rachel, then, just going to get through the last few comments, folks. I'm going to be signing off there now soon. Rachel, have my te third test this week. Thanks for the videos. I've helped with the nerves. I think both fails have knocked my confidence a bit. Well, Rachel, you have to think of those fails as stepping stones and learning curves okay so you either succeed or you learn okay try and write down the main things you learned from those first two tests what did you fail on what caused you trouble and then you can apply that absorb that and don't let it happen again okay because life is a journey just like driving you'll always be learning as you go along even when you pass the test you still have lots to learn be it on motorways or driving in different towns or cities or countries okay so those first two tests, they will not define you. They will help you get to where you want to be, okay? So good luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions. My email is there, okay? Luke McKenna, I have to say, Dane, you're an absolute light. Well, you're very kind, Luke. You know, very, very kind. Appreciate that. Maria and Nicola, give us a thumbs up. Thank you, Maria. Mulder X, that name rings a bell. I'm waiting well over 16 months. 16 months for my retest? Where am I on the list? Because the RSA are off. Oh, don't stop. Don't talk about that crowd. <clears throat> Muller, if I were you, I had a fella actually here in Wetton in Escort. He actually, he was doing his test there. He, he passed there last week, which was great. But he had an issue as well with the RSA where they were saying he had to do his 12 lessons, even though he got his permit in, like in 2008 when he didn't have to do his lessons. So 
the only the way he got it sorted out, the only way he got it sorted out was he had to ring, get in touch with local TD here, who's a fellow by a, a Fianna Fáil guy by the name of James Brown, and I believe James Brown helped him to navigate that issue because he couldn't get through to the RSA, he couldn't get any sense out of him, and look at if you're waiting sixteen months, there's something wrong there, something seriously wrong. You should not be waiting that long. Your your thing needs to be looked at. So if I were you. I would get in touch with a local councillor, or even better, a local TD, and ask them to investigate what's going on here because something is not right there. And I don't, I don't know myself, but that needs to be investigated. You're waiting too long there. Something's not right, okay? Dermot, what is the best time in the day to do the test? Dermot, interesting you said. I had a few people do a test over the last couple of weeks and they failed at around four o'clock. So if you can choose it, try and do it maybe around quarter past nine, half nine, maybe ten o'clock. Because they're, I think they're the best times because they're just a little bit quieter because the schools are all done and people have gotten to work hopefully by that stage. So, um, but then again, no, look, you can fail at any time. But that that would be my advice. Um, AC. I've always found driving in Dublin more peaceful than stress. That's good in stress. Yeah, that's that's interesting. It's nice to be in a warm car driving around the city, and walking around the coast. Yeah, certainly, absolutely. If you're used to walking or if you've been walking, um, <clears throat> you know, driving even in a bigger city is, is good that's, that's quite a good point there AC void check you said instructors may be allowed to sit in on the test somewhere soon hopefully anyway but my question is <clears throat> do you think about dash cam I would love to have dash cams in the driving test void check but I just know I'm wasting my time because in this country there's so many GDPR rules like privacy rules that that would never happen even in England that doesn't happen in England even either so um that won't happen here. The best we can hope for is to have maybe more updates to the driving test, maybe parking, maybe emergency stop, satellite navigation, independent drive, and the instructor sitting in the back maybe. But that, that's, that's if we got that, we'd be doing well. Liam McKenna, check the NDLS website. It says I need another eye test for my full license after getting one a couple of months ago for my learners. My mate said all they needed was... A, yeah, generally speaking, you need your learner's permit. Hang on, no, is that is that for... For your first license, you need to, if it is for your first license, <clears throat> first full license, you need your learner permit, your certificate of competency, proof of PPS, just some ID just in case. But the NDLS will have most of your information there. If you've done an eye test before, you don't have to do one again, okay? Just be careful you're not checking there for for your first learner permit, okay? It, you might be checking for your first learner permit, not your first full license. If you've already done an eye test before, you don't need to do one again, okay? I, I can assure you of that anyway. Motor X, best of luck to you. You will do. Um, Daniel, da Daniela, there. Thank you. You're very welcome, Daniela. Glad you liked the videos. Maria, Nicola, been waiting eight weeks in Dundalk. It's not too bad. My third test, have a book next month. Not too bad. Best of luck to you, Maria, Nicola, with your test in Dundalk. Let me know if you have any questions. And might be the last comment now if I'm signing off now, folks. Um, Dermot, did my first test at 12.45. It was disaster. Stu yeah, students out walking. Because students can be, they can be pretty reckless on the road sometimes. Um, Donegal Town, Diamond being completely full. Yeah, sometimes. And young lads especially, young male students can be in a nightmare because they're just pushing each other around the place. They're acting the maggot. And it can be a bit of a disaster. So if you can choose your time, and you hopefully you'll have good options, a, a time of like 9.15, half 9, you know, 9.45, 10, half 10 is a good time to do it, Okay. Danielle is on the waiting list for Tala, and meanwhile I'm watching your videos. Great. Uh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I drove in Sao Paulo, Brazil's capital, for 15 years. 15 million people, but here I'm scared. <laughs> it can't be, can't be worse than that, can it? But uh, the best of luck to you, Daniela. I hope you, you do very well. Just remember, get lessons, okay? Get professional driving lessons, particularly close to the driving test. You know, And, and the hour before the test can be good as well, okay, to get the lessons. Because... Um, that can really help get you in the right frame of mind for a test if you get driving lessons, okay? Um, Wojciech says, in Poland, dash cams are not only allowed, well, that's, that's interesting, but compulsory on category B drive. That's very good. Bards of Dobra, since 2006 or 2007, no concerns about privacy. Oh, welcome to Ireland, Wojciech. It's, it's a different ball game. It's great that they have dash cams in Poland because I like I think it, it makes things more accountable. Learners, if, they, if they're if they kicking up over something, the tester can say, well, this is what happened, and vice versa. To me, dash cams are great. They make sense because they're, you know, they, they just give clarity to situations. But I, I don't think it's going to happen here. 
Maria Nicola Dan might be the last comment here. How can I send you my test sheet? Oh, just email it, Maria, um, from my last test. I can help you there. Just email it, daintai at gmail.com, screenshot or take a photo of it, and I'll, I can go through it. If you're sending me it there, Maria, just make sure you tell me <clears throat> what happened, what the tester said to you, uh, as much information as you can, okay? So, folks, I'd like to thank you all very much. Um, Roberta, you're very welcome. Um, best wishes, Roberta. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you being here with me. I'd like to say uh, good luck to anybody out there doing a driving test. Take it one step at a time, one road at a time, and you'll be fine, okay? You will get there. Appreciate any support. Um, email me if you have any questions. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And best wishes, and stay safe. Slán, go